Everyone, welcome. It's so great to be with you this afternoon. My name is Tommy Walters. I'm the Senior Director of Development and Communications here at the World Affairs Council of Pittsburgh. And it is my pleasure to be here with you this afternoon for this DLC celebration. Uh, on behalf of myself, the staff, and the board, everyone at the council, it is our pleasure to welcome you here this afternoon. And we're so glad to be uh, celebrating with you today, uh, your achievements, where you've been, and how important you are to all of us at the Council. Uh, I come to the Council from a, a varied background, uh, but I have a, a close spot in my heart, obviously working here now. Uh, but I was once a high school student participant in council programs uh, growing up in, in Butler County, just north of Pittsburgh. Uh, so I've always had a, a special place for the council in my heart, and it's uh, kind of full circle to be here with you this afternoon, uh, welcoming you and celebrating your work. Uh, over the past year, we've been uh, undergoing some strategic planning, developing a new mission and new vision for the council as we celebrate our next 90 years. Uh, and we are really keen to feature and focus on youth voice, youth leadership, and uh, participation in our programs. Uh, we've merged, as you may have seen, with Global Minds Initiative uh, as of December 31st of 2020. So Global Minds is now uh, an important program that we have here at the Council. And we are again thrilled to be with you uh, to celebrate the work that you've accomplished over the last year uh, or last uh, several years, uh, depending on um, pre-COVID or not, uh, when you started your programs with us. Uh, and, and we thought it was really important to get together this afternoon to celebrate your work. So it, it's great to be with all of you again. Uh, we have a few guests with us this afternoon, and I, I wanted to give you a, a heads up with what's coming up in the program. We're going to celebrate all of the students uh, with County Executive Rich Fitzgerald as he awards uh, your certificates to you formally. Uh, we'll hear remarks on the importance of being globally minded by Allah Mohammed, the policy coordinator in the Office of Equity for the city of Pittsburgh. We're gonna learn about the impacts of the GLC program and how students have empowered local and global communities through service learning projects. And we're going to catch up with GLC alumni to find out how the program shaped where they are today. Obviously, this is a great council program and a way for you to be connected with us. Uh, so we will make sure that we share some exciting opportunities for upcoming programs uh, for youth. Uh, for youth by youth programs and different ways to be involved with the council. Thanks so much, everyone. It's great to be here. It's great to celebrate you. Happy Friday. Uh, and without further ado, it is my pleasure to turn it over and introduce County Executive Rich Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald. Well, thank you, Tommy. And uh, I also want to convey my welcome to the, uh, the students uh, the parents, uh, the teachers, uh, the family members, and thank those uh, teachers and family members, parents who have encouraged the students uh, to, to participate in this program. Um, you know, this, this region, this Pittsburgh region, uh, is, is always been globally connected. Um, and obviously this year, you know, the year of the mask, I guess, you know, one of the things we'll, we'll remember about this year as we, you know, move through this a very difficult trying time, but the students uh, do deserve their recognition for the work they've continued to do uh, throughout this pandemic. Uh, again, we're very connected to the world and, and no more important than, than this year, as, as we all know that uh, the problems and challenges that we face are faced everywhere across the globe. Uh, and we need to you know, keep that in, in mind and the importance and the youth leadership that you're providing and learning about uh, at the uh, certificate celebration that we're having today is really, really important. So we want to congratulate those students. Um, we're going to be celebrating, I guess, 46 of them. Um, 39 completed the uh, World Affairs Council Global Leadership Certificate uh, Program. And now I'd like to officially recognize those 39 Global Certificate uh, recipients that will go across your screen. Uh, and I'll be reading the uh, schools uh, from which they came. Um, 
So I want to thank uh, the City Charter School, City Charter High School, North Allegheny High School, Oil City High School, Pittsburgh Brashear High School, Pittsburgh Kappa 6 through 12, Pittsburgh Taylor Autodice High School, Pittsburgh Westinghouse Academy 6 through 12, Seneca Valley High School, Sewickley Academy, South Side Area High School, and Thomas Jefferson High School. And again, congratulations to all the Global Leadership Certificate recipients. Thank you for your hard work uh, and your impact that you are making uh, on this region. And we encourage you to continue that work uh, as you move through your, the, your, your years. Uh, the, you know, this GLC program was first piloted uh, about uh, seven years ago, 2014-15 school year. Uh, and today we're recognizing those who completed the 1920 school year and thank them for their continued work. Uh, this was it took some, some, some doing and some work that had to be done attending active participation in lectures, workshops, video conferences, and uh, in, in interacting with experts in international affairs. Completion of a dynamic global studies course uh, or in person at the Manchester Craftsman Guild. We want to thank them for their work, another great partner that we have in this region uh, uh, going through this, through this project. We also want to recognize seven of the students who completed the Global Scholars Certificate Program. Uh, I'd like to now officially recognize the Global Scholars participant. Uh, those will now go across the screen as well. Um, and they will be sharing the names and the schools um, from which they came. And again, those students who, uh, who participated in that, we want to we thank them. Um, students in the program had to complete six courses across different disciplines, uh, demonstrate a skill in a foreign language, participate in at least three globally focused extracurricular activities, complete 20 plus hours of globally focused service activity, uh, complete a project that encap encapsulates their global competency. The project for these students was a global language program for elementary students. So again, thank you and congratulations uh, to, to the students, the parents. Uh, and again, thank you for your service to this community. Uh, and we look forward to you, you know, continuing that service uh, as you go through your, uh, through your school years and on into your adulthood. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you so much to the county executive for joining us tonight. We really appreciate him being here and making this celebration so special. So thank you so much for your remarks. Um, I also want to take a minute to introduce myself. I'm Kathleen Knoll, for those of you who don't know me, and I am the director of youth programs here at the council. I'm so happy to be here with you all celebrating tonight. Um, I just wanna take a minute uh, for all of us to be able to celebrate the students that are joining us at this virtual celebration event. If you go down into your lower toolbar, you'll see a uh, reactions option. Please feel free to add your reactions uh, to celebrate those students in your life or to celebrate yourself for all of your amazing achievements and accomplishments. Um, to showcase those achievements and accomplishments and in place of what we traditionally have, which is an in-person service learning project showcase, we will now highlight our students' incredible work and the impact of their service learning projects through this short nine minute video showcase. So we hope you enjoy. Just give me one moment to pull it up. I am now through the Global Education Program, but I'm really interested in global affairs and sustainability. I don't think that these are topics that we talk about much at school, so I thought it would be nice to have a club where we could discuss these important issues and work to implement them into our local area. My whole life, my family is uh, regularly going to these long since Pittsburgh, uh, the biggest mosque in Pittsburgh. My mom's involved with the board there, so I'm very involved in that community. So I thought, you know, why why don't mosques have these blood drives? Do we just not know about them? I'm sure the community would be uh, eager to help out with something so vital to uh, 
to the community as a whole. Yassine and I completed the Vital and Blood Drive together at the Islamic Center of Pittsburgh. Yassine thought of this project a few months after Vital came to our school and told us about the United States' massive blood shortages in hospitals. My service learning project was about composting. The inspiration behind this project was the UN Sustainable Development Goals, specifically the Climate Action Goal. And I knew that Pittsburgh had a pretty bad climate, so I wanted to see what I could do about it. So I researched and I found out about composting, and it seemed really interesting and extremely shocking how much food waste we were all creating. So I decided to make pamphlets and posters to make my community more aware of composting, and I'm currently working to bring composting to my community actually by implementing communal composting bins. The original and initial inspiration for our language project was wanting to heighten global awareness among students. We realized that in today's day and age, uh, that in this country, if we were to ask any average U.S. citizen about another country's culture uh, or language or tradition, that they would not be able to answer correctly. Children are most impressionable and susceptible to learning new things when they are young. So sparking an interest in them was important. It allowed us to share our knowledge of some of these foreign cultures, such as French and Spanish, with some younger kids who do not necessarily have access to any sort of cultural exposure. And they would be so enthusiastic about learning. We went from having only a few people in each class to having to split our team members to make more classes available with 15 to 20 people per class. And this was very exciting for us because we knew that what we were doing was reaching these other students and we ultimately opened it up to a whole other school as well that was in our district. We knew that meant that more students in the district were becoming interested in learning about different cultures and learning different languages. I created a presentation called Climate Change. This was made an event through the Global Leadership Certificate program where other students could attend and learn more about the effects of climate change, current innovations that are being created in regards to technology, as well as what we can do as students to help combat this issue. Going to the Netherlands and learning about the LGBTQ plus rights movement not only made me want to become a bigger advocate and activist for the LGBTQ plus community, but for other marginalized communities across the world as well. I was just really frustrated with all the polarization I was seeing, um, both in the United States and across the world. Um, there are so many things that we see in the world that are different, different political beliefs, different cultures, different identities. They all cause conflicts when really they should um, be serving as opportunities for discussion and collaboration. In spring of 2020, I hosted a virtual student discussion on the global impact of COVID-19. I wanted to lead the discussion to create a safe space and welcoming platform for students throughout the greater Pittsburgh region to come together and talk about their personal experiences with COVID-19, sharing stories from quarantine and tips on how they've been staying mentally and physically healthy during these emotionally taxing times. I have long been a transit advocate, but it wasn't until recently that I have engaged with my community with it. I'm an urbanist, so I have long noticed the terrible effects of our dependency with cars. Not everyone can get a car or drive one, but we as a society depend on it for everything, on the expense of transit service. So that's what inspired me to engage with my community. This project was very important to me and others because our theme this year was our vision, our voice, and just being able to get to uh, see these students uh, learn that their voice is a lot more powerful than they might realize and that they have the power to make their vision become a reality. Uh, that empowerment at this event was incredible to see and we got a huge variety of speakers to come in and talk about youth impact in so many different areas. I realized during the COVID-19 pandemic that our heavy reliance on local grocers and retailers were diverting resources to those truly in need. I was also learning about the widening wealth gap in the world through the news, and I realized that without widespread financial education, there is little hope to alleviate poverty levels. That's why I decided to create a virtual workshop series for kids in my community to learn about personal finance and pressing global current issues. My service learning project is being part of a virtual program design committee for an upcoming six-part series focused on global news. I think one of the most important aspects of this program is the fact that it's by youth for youth. On the committee's end, it will give us experience with planning events, and on the participants' ends, hopefully it will be provide them with a relevant and engaging way to learn about global news. 
You know, finding volunteer opportunities is hard, and looking is a big waste of time if you don't really end up finding one. So with this project, I hope I can help people find a new opportunity and, you know, remedy the problem that they've had. I wanted to essentially focus on cholera, which is a disease that unfortunately occurs when there is a lack of access to clean water and sanitation. Um, it is a waterborne disease that we don't actually get in the U.S. because we have these facilities that will allow us to have clean water and we have proper sanitation facilities. However, this disease, which is entirely preventable, uh, unfortunately affects millions of people around the world where they simply lack these necessities. Um, and so I wanted to help uh, ameliorate this issue. Soon after, the COVID-19 pandemic hit and Yassine realized that we needed blood now more than ever. In the end, the event was a success as we filled the 33 slots given to us by Vitalin. Personally, this was a project that came with a lot of responsibility. I had tasks to complete and people to organize in a way that fit our time constraints and the regulations given to us. It was very fulfilling and I'm very proud of what we accomplished. In, in my community, around the, around the school, um, people are more educated about COVID-19 in the environment. Um, to everyone who signed up, um, I think they learned more about um, how COVID-19 has a lot of different impacts, more than just health, right? After completing my service learning project, I learned that pretty much any given community has individuals who are willing to support your cause. Because I started a club, I needed support from students and teachers alike, which they readily gave to me. As I continue with my project and the process of advocacy, I will be sure to acknowledge and display appreciation for all of the individuals that support my work, as they are the reason why this project was a huge success. I was able to share my experiences in the Netherlands a few months later after coming back from the trip um, through a big convention with other students that also traveled to different countries and we basically all gave presentations about our experiences in those other countries. Through this project, I learned how to develop a plan and how to properly follow through on projects and a lot about food waste and reducing food waste that I hope to continue to do in the future. In the future, whatever project we're working on, whatever jobs we end up having, just always be prepared, even if it's in our own families when we're older, something that's going on, always be 100% prepared. Once again, I would like to thank you for watching our presentation on the World Language Education Program. We hope you enjoyed our presentation as much as we enjoyed teaching these kids about different world languages, cultures, and ethics that they have the opportunity to learn here at Riverview High School. Well, I'm not exactly sure how world leadership is going to play a role in my future career plans just yet. Um, I do think it has impacted just how I'm going to be as a human. I think it's made me more globally minded, um, civically engaged, and giving me a greater sense of thinking about others' perspectives and opinions um, and how we can create a world that's better for everybody uh, as we move forward. So what is working? Because you can't do everything alone and you have to be able to communicate and collaborate effectively around the world, regardless of what you're working on, whether it be a global health crisis like a current pandemic, uh, or anything else that comes up in the future. But I think that that is a lesson that I think that I will take with me uh, from this service project. So let's continue celebrating our students. Uh, I just want to quickly um, thank every student who submitted a video for our showcase tonight. Um, I really appreciate all of your work on your videos and especially on your meaningful and important projects. You all did a wonderful job and have really impacted our region and we're so grateful for you. Um, and so if you were featured, if your friends were featured, uh, if you're a parent and your um, child was featured, if you're a teacher and your student was featured, please show them some love using your reaction features. Um, and now I just wanna take a moment to introduce our next speaker. It's my honor to introduce her. Her name is Ella Mohammed. She is the policy coordinator and the Office of Equity for the city of Pittsburgh. And she's also a great friend of the council. And she's gonna give some brief remarks tonight on the importance of being globally minded and the impact that the Global Leadership Certificate Program has had. So Ella, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Kathleen. Can you hear me? Good. Well, um, it's great to be here with you all tonight. I wanna take a moment to, again, congratulate everyone um, 
for their certificate that's getting a certificate tonight. It is really inspiring to see young people in our region celebrating the importance of service leadership and global mindedness. So in lieu of being in an auditorium together where we get some thundering applause, I'll just share another emoji reaction clap. <laughs> Um, so as Kathleen said, I am currently a policy coordinator for uh, the Mayor's Office of Equity here at the City of Pittsburgh, so I have the privilege of working for the people of Pittsburgh um, in, the, in the role of service. And before this current role that, I was, that I'm in, I did a year of service through an organization called Pulse, which is also a local uh, Pittsburgh organization that dedicates itself to service. So service has been a big part, a big core part of my craft as an adult and as a youth. Um, so that's why I'm very honored to be here with you today. And I want to focus a little bit on the term globally minded, because I feel like it's kind of like an oxymoron in and of itself, where you have the word global referring to the world at large, which is sometimes very big and can seem far away. Um, and then you have the word mind, your mind, your brain, your most intimate thought. It's the closest thing to yourself. And in the process of becoming globally minded, you're bringing this big world or portions of this big world and you're trying to digest it inside your brain. You're trying to understand something that you are not familiar with. In the process of trying to understand something, our minds change, our brains change the way that we think, the way that we process information changes. So I want you, everyone here, to delve inwards and close your eyes if you need to, um, but think about the experience that you have had, the experiences that you've had through this global learning certificate program or whatever certificate you're receiving today the activities you engaged in with one another, and more importantly, the conversations that you had and the people that you met. Can you think of one way that this experience has affected your thinking? And I hope you can. My journey with global mindedness starts with my migration as a young child from the northern tip of Africa, where I was born to North America. And I came from a very different part of the world, different language, different culture, different values. And this here, the language we're speaking in right now, the culture we're engaging in together right now was my foreign experience. This was my experience in trying to understand something that I was not familiar with. And when I moved to this country, as I said, I was very young, but I was only able to understand things at the time through the cultural lens that I was born into. And immigrating here opened up pathways in my brain, a new way to understand the world. But that didn't mean that my old worldview suddenly disappeared. I developed a skill where I was able to see and understand both cultural lenses and both perspectives. So my experience with global mindedness cultivated a skill in me called empathy. And empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. And my relationship with globally, being globally minded is based in this internal impact, the skill set that I developed that has arguably been my biggest asset through my throughout my relationships that I have forged and throughout my entire career. So as of tonight, this program has 149 alumni. And since 2019, you all have participated in 1,100 globally focused discussions, programs, and activities. But the most important impact of this program and of being globally minded, the most important impact you can have in this world, I would argue, is not measured in terms of the change you bring to other people's lives. It is the, the most important impact is the change you have on yourself, your mind, your body, your spirit. I know this sounds weird. We're talking about 
service and global service and being selfless, but the best way to serve this world is to bring your best self into it. So it's kind of cool that by working to expand our minds and our understandings of ourselves, we are somehow also building up our capacity for empathy or our ability to understand and eventually serve the people in this world. So I want you to let your impact on the world be a byproduct of the work that you do on yourself. So thank you for having me today. And with that, here's a video that, um, here's a video from our current certificate recipients highlighting the meaningful engagement in the program and the important impacts it's had on their lives. The Global Leadership Certificate Program, affectionately GLC, has been a truly unforgettable, life-changing experience. It has equipped within me a globally-minded outlook and opened my eyes to the beautifully complex world of international relations, which I have fallen in love with. Through my own research and reading the responses of my peers, I have discovered a lot of the global issues that are taking place today that are not talked about in high school history classes. I've learned how to communicate effectively and how to voice opinions on topics that are sometimes not covered by the media. And I've also learned about topics that I've become more passionate about, such as the refugee crisis and climate change, which has allowed me to go out there and create change in my own community, such as um, working with Hello Neighbor for a school fundraising project, and then also focusing on sustainability and composting for my service learning project. I also learned about the work people at MCG do to reduce inequities in terms of access to education for Pittsburgh's youth, which is so inspiring and commendable. I definitely became more culturally aware and curious about other cultures and world affairs, and I definitely got in touch with my own culture more through this program. I feel like one thing, part of my mindset that I've learned is how to get out of my own little bubble of focusing on what goes on in the Pittsburgh region. And I feel like I've really opened up and started learning more about how to learn about other places in the world instead of just focusing on where I am. This program has shown me how influential globalization is on our everyday lives and exposed me to the cultures of others. Furthermore, the program has taught me the importance of networking as the, it has opened so many doors to me that I would have never thought possible. It has also built my confidence in public speaking and generally expressing my ideas to others on topics that I wouldn't have otherwise been confident enough to do so. Now I feel confident in my ability to think critically about the issues facing our world, understand how they all impact one another, and understand what my role and my community's role is in contributing solutions. It's taught me self-confidence and how I am capable of whatever I set my mind to. This program has also prepared me for the future by giving me the skills of effective communication and productive discussion on a broad range of topics, which are also applicable to my higher education as well as my career. For the future, I am more able to present these skills in college, um, take these skills outside of the classroom in real life, um, sort of understand real world political issues. Um, the, the program definitely made me more civically engaged for sure. The whole program, especially the service learning project, really prepared me to take more action on projects that I'm passionate about and overall be more aware about what's going on in the world, different world affairs. I think also after this program, I'm more likely to seek out information about um, things that are happening kind of in the current global politics field. Um, things like going to an online seminar or um, reading sites like foreign policy that have a lot more um, information about this, so I'm more likely to seek out those things. This program has really heightened my ambition for a higher education that allows me to make a difference in my community and in the world. It's shown me that world affairs is what I am truly passionate about, and I now know that I want to study international relations in college. Something I think that I gained from my service learning project was just an insight into the event planning process and how we can create meaningful and intentional events that are impactful and educational for other people. The best thing that the program has provided for me is a curiosity for the world around me. I strongly believe that the more I understand about the world, the more useful I can be to it. 
And I think that that's what makes uh, learning about other cultures so valuable because whenever you see how they tackle issues, how they use uh, culture as a carrier for ideas, you can kind of apply that to your own um, culture and learn more about yourself and the, the people around you. The World Affairs event that I enjoyed the most was the Emerging Global Leader Seminar that took place this last summer. Through five virtual seminars, I was able to learn more about the pandemic's effects on politics, education, healthcare, the economy, and the environment. Throughout the series, several experts and people with first-hand experiences provided their input. I loved it because it helped me wrap my head around what COVID means for the present and the future, and helped me understand the various ways that it has impacted different communities. In terms of which event I enjoyed most for the Global Leadership Program, it was probably the environmental lectures. You know, I know the pandemic made it hard to go to a lot of interesting events, but I really enjoyed listening to these talks just because it was always someone different with a new perspective. I enjoyed our speaker events the most. Anytime that I'd get to uh, go to Pittsburgh or even sometimes to my school's auditorium and just listen to someone who's an expert in their field, whether it be you know Middle East politics, Russia, any of these climate change, any of these um, topics, just being able to learn the depth of knowledge that these people have and being able to learn from them was very rewarding. My favorite GLCA event was the post-film discussion of Golda. Not only was it thought-provoking and interesting in its historic sense, but the discussion afterwards was fulfilling and eye-opening. Also, one of my all-time favorites was visiting Thread International, which is a company that repurposes uh, recycled plastic bottles into amazing bags. And that was incredible because that introduced me to the world of social entrepreneurship. Hello everyone, my name is Hannah Shin and I'm going to be leading our GSC alumni discussion. Uh, you might have seen me in the video just now, but I'm a junior at North Allegheny Senior High School. I'm currently serving the council as the Innovation and Research Fellow, and I am honored to now be a GLC alum. The council has truly changed my life and shaped me as a leader and globally minded student, and I'm so excited to have this discussion today to hear from these five incredible people about how the council has played a role in their journeys through the GLC program. So yeah, I'll start off by introducing our lovely panelists. First up is Jessica Barber. She is a 2018 GLC recipient, and she was one of the council's global travel scholarship recipients and traveled to Morocco to explore multiculturalism in North Africa. She is currently a junior at Temple University studying international studies in French. She plans to apply for the Fulbright Scholar Program and hopes to work with refugees across the globe or focus on women's rights and do lots of traveling. Next, we have with us here today, Madeline Escort. She is also, she is a 2017 GLC recipient. For her service learning project, she taught French language and culture to elementary age children. And she is currently studying international relations with a focus in global health and environmental sustainability at American University. Her career goal is to work in the areas of women's health and mental health abroad. Next up, we have Sebastian Eminent. He is a 2018 GLC recipient and his service learning project was titled Health for Haiti. He's currently enrolled in a five-year dual degree program and studies international relations at Brown University and apparel design at the Rhode Island School of Design. After he graduates, he plans to pursue a career in public service while keeping his art practice alive. Then we have Brianna McCann. She was a 2017 GLC recipient and her service learning project was a global news segment during our high school's morning announcements called Around the World in Two Minutes with Brianna McCann. She is graduating in May from Robert Morris University with a bachelor's in political science and master's in organizational nonprofit leadership. She'll be attending Penn State Law in the fall studying international law and plans to work for an international agency or NGO. Finally, last but not least is Caleb Yip, a 2017 GLC recipient. For his service learning project, he hosted a film screening and discussion for the Around the World in Pittsburgh documentary. He is currently a grad student participating in a five-year accelerated security security studies program at Georgetown University School of Foreign Service and is studying international politics. His career goal is to work in the public sector in either the State Department or the defense intelligence community. All of you are incredibly inspiring and I'm thrilled to have this discussion with you today. 
So moving right along, I will be asking each of you one question, but my first and last questions will be directed toward all five of you to answer. To start off, can each of you briefly share with us in about a sentence or two, your passions and the causes you care most deeply about? We can start with Jessica and proceed in the order I introduced you. Sure, hello everyone. Um, I just wanna say congratulations to all of the recipients of the certificate. This is a really exciting time. Um, I would say some of my greatest passions at the moment are working with refugees. Um, I currently intern at Highest Pennsylvania, so I'm really enjoying that. And then I also really love writing. Um, I write a lot about women's issues on my blog, and then I also write for Global Philadelphia. So those are two of my greatest passions. Wonderful. Yeah. Madeline? Hi, everyone. Congratulations, and thank you for having me here. Um, I would say... Um, my greatest interest right now is global health and global health diplomacy, given the state of the world um, and where the two intersect with that. Um, and yeah, outside of school and everything, I like to go on hikes and just be anywhere where there's peace and quiet. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for having me. And Hannah, your professionalism is astounding. I appreciate it. Um, I would say the passions right now that are um, that I'm focusing on, I would say art advocacy. I've been um, putting together like zines and stuff to advocate for decarceral drug policy. And I'm working on a fundraiser right now for Youth Pride Rhode Island and getting um, free social workers to queer youth in Rhode Island. So yeah, art advocacy has been like really fun for me. Thank you all for having me and congratulations to the students getting their certificates tonight. Um, I think my biggest passion has always just kind of been finding peaceful resolution to conflict, especially among ethnic groups. Um, and that's why I'm really excited about, you know, international law, trying to find ways to deliver justice. And that's really kind of the thing that drives me. Thanks for having me tonight. And yeah, congratulations to all the students. Um, I think for me, I focus quite a lot on security issues. And so it's more along the lines of preventing um, nuclear weapon proliferation. Um, that's something that I worked heavily on um, when I was at the State Department. And, you know, it's a very fulfilling job to, you know, make the world, you know, at least, if not a better place, at least a safer place for tomorrow. I love that. Thank you all for sharing. And Sebastian, also for your compliment. Um, I think all of your diverse interests, all centered upon advocacy, really show how a globally minded approach can apply to a wide array of causes. So next, this question delves into the heart of our discussion here today. Um, this one will be for Madeline. How did your participation in the GLC impact the ways in which you view the world and shape your college and or maybe even career plans? Yeah, well, my participation with the GLC actually led me to an opportunity in DC when I was a junior. I was able to, the council sponsored me to go to the um, Save the Children Advocacy Summit, and that was a really formative experience for me. Um, we got to learn all about how to advocate, how to go on the Hill and lobby for something, and that experience just was just completely rocked my whole world. And I'm currently at American University in DC, and it was honestly like one of the main experiences that really made me want to be here and really be in the thick of it and fight for you know, whatever I think needs fighting for and whatever I'm passionate about. Yeah, thank you. I think GLC really not only teaches students how to learn about issues, but also to learn how to speak up about them. And I think advocacy is such an important topic that getting youth involved early on is incredible. So moving on, this is one of my favorite questions. Uh, Brianna, what is a memorable experience that you had with the council that shaped you or is still sticking with you today? That is a great question, Hannah. Um, I would probably be a cop out to say all of it, so I won't say that, I'll be more specific. Uh, but just having the opportunity to do Around the World in Two Minutes was huge. Like I still talk about that project. It was like the centerpiece of my uh, personal statement for law school, which was great. Um, but I think just kind of the fact that that project opened so many doors for me. And one of the moments that sticks out to me um, was I had the opportunity to kind of be at this like tabling session to talk about it where I was in this school and these two guys walked past and were just like looking at me and I was like this okay and the one guy's like oh we know what you do we love what you do and I was like thank you not not sure how but that's wonderful 
And that was the moment that really stuck out to me was the World Affairs Council encourages you to do these projects that do impact other people. Like sometimes it feels like maybe you think you're doing something in a vacuum, but you're not. People know what you're doing. And that moment is still so funny to me, but really speaks volumes about just the reach of this and what the program and the council kind of allows you to reach as well. Yeah, and to think how many other students in your school have you've impacted and they just didn't get the chance to tell you. So yeah, honestly, all of you have probably impacted a lot of people in your lives that you might not even know. Um, okay, so GLC trains youth to make an impact in the world. And expanding upon how this experience has shaped you, I was wondering if Caleb could share um, what is your most valuable skill or mindset that you've gained from participating in this program? Yeah, I do think, um, and this is something that a lot of the students touched on in the videos as well, but, you know, understanding and having a, you know, a uh, frame of mind that you can understand how other people think, because that's something that's incredibly important. Um, you know, when I was at the State Department, we were constantly having talks with whether it was other countries or even just people from other agencies to try and come together and put, you know, a proposal together or work together on some particular issue. And so both having those interpersonal skills to be able to communicate effectively and to be able to advocate for what you believe in, but also, you know, to be able to make compromises, those are very important skills and they will serve you out well, regardless of where you end up. Um, but, you know, it is something that's especially important when you're thinking about an international relations context. I think GLC definitely does establish a really beautiful balance between personal and professional skills. Um, one moment you're having just like the time of your life meeting new people from other high schools and another moment you're learning about this major issue you've never even heard about yet. Um, okay, yeah. So as you reflect uh, upon the purpose and mission of GLC, Jessica, can you speak to us about why you think global mindedness and global connection are important for young people? Yeah, of course, Hannah. Um, I grew up in a really rural community outside of Pittsburgh. Um, I'm a little bit of an outlier to all the, the Pittsburgh schools, but um, there were a lot of people in my community that weren't um, super globally minded, like no one in my family had traveled out of the country. So going to Morocco was a really big step for me. So whenever I came back, I tried really hard to tell others about my experience, about the world, a lot of misconceptions, um, things like that. And then Whenever I decided to move to Philadelphia, um, definitely a little bit bigger of a city than, than Pittsburgh. It was a little bit intimidating at first, but um, it really, going to Morocco shaped exactly what I wanted to do in school. And all international studies is about is really making other people aware of the world around you and other people's perspectives, experiences, differences, things like that. So um, I think just making others aware of those types of things in this world where we're all so interconnected is really important um, and just having respect for one another. It can really enhance all of our life's experiences. So, yeah. Yeah, I think something, a theme that has been reoccurring throughout the GLC experience is how the world is so much more interconnected than you could ever imagine. And I think really once you consider that, respect just becomes naturally embedded in the lifestyle. And I'm really happy that you brought that up because I think that's a very big takeaway. Uh, so next up, Sebastian, I wanted to ask you on behalf of other GLC alumni and fellow youth, what opportunities outside of, in addition to GLC, influence you to become more globally minded? Or what other experiences like studying abroad would you recommend? Yeah, I was definitely inspired by the engagement I had with the international community from the Global Leadership Certificate. and. I kept that going whenever I entered college and I had the opportunity to study in Argentina for a summer to learn the language and understand a little bit more about its culture and politics. And I highly recommend doing it. It was an excellent trip and um, you learn so much from just interacting with people and getting dinner and just casual things like that. Um, so that's been very formative for sure. Um, yeah, I've really appreciated everything that I've gotten to experience with the Global Issues Certificate, and in the future, I'll probably do more. That's wonderful, and I'm really happy that you've mentioned that 
Um, like we're obviously not done, like you're gonna continue to do more. And I think that's a very big aspect of this program is that it encourages us to do more. And what do we do from here, carrying on what we learn? And so it looks like I have enough time to ask you both, um, both of the questions that I really wanted to ask. So I'm just gonna start off with the first one, but as a reminder, these two will be for all of you and you can talk in any order um, depending on who wants to talk first. And so this one is kind of a fun question. If you were to give a TED talk full of advice for you, what would you call it? I hope, I hope it's not a hard question. All right, I'm gonna call on Caleb. See, we didn't get time to prepare for this. This is unfair. Um, okay, so I don't have a good name, but I do, I think I know what I would talk about. Um, so in high school, I had done quite a lot in, you know, Model United Nations and these kind of simulations. Um, but one thing that, you know, I kept thinking about was, you know, like how realistic is this? You know, how, and this was the same with a lot of the GLC stuff too, you know, like how well does this actually translate to what you do in the real world? And it turns out the answer is quite a lot. Um, you know, that's one thing that I think people don't recognize that, you know, in the real world, sure, things don't happen as quickly as they do, you know, in a model UN committee, but it's the same process, you know, you're constantly trying to find common ground where you can collaborate, you're trying to, you know, find somewhere where both people, despite massive disagreements can agree on even if it's small bits and you go from there. Um, and Certainly it takes much, much longer as I'm sure you'll see if you look at any kind of diplomatic history. But you know, at the end of the day, it really is that same kind of thing. And so, you know, looking back, those early experiences of, you know, doing Model United Nations, doing these kind of GLC events were very, very helpful in preparing me for a career in international relations. I wanna to listen to this TED talk. <laughs> I think you should give it. Yeah, I think something uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but I think something that I really respect about the perspective that you bring is that you've had a lot of experience learning about diplomacy. Um, and I just think, yeah, that would be a wonderful TED talk. All right. So who wants to go next? Oh, Jessica, take it away. Okay. Okay. So the first thing that came to mind, um, what my TED talk will be named is the importance of tired optimism. That's actually what my blog is called The Tired Optimist. And it's kind of become like a mantra that I live by. Um, doing all these projects can be exhausting. Trying to confront all the world's problems at once are exhausting. Um, so like a lot of the video talked about, everyone really honed in on what was passionate to them. Um, and as one of my favorite world leaders, Samantha Power had said that you can't, um, change the whole world, but you can focus on changing individual worlds. So I think um, just kind of remaining optimistic, but knowing that it'll make you a little tired at times is a good way to approach things. I'm sure, I'm sure that talk would give a lot of encouragement to people in similar situations. Yep, Madeline. So this one, I raised this question, I actually laughed because I'm not sure, I could be remembering this wrong, but a few years ago, I remember Kathleen and Brittany and I had a conversation about this, and I can't remember if they posed this to me or if I posed this to them, because ever since then, it's been a question that I ask people when I meet them for the first time, um, and I yet still to have my own good answer when people throw it back to me, I still <laughs> struggle to have a good answer to it, but I guess if I'm just thinking of it right now, like one of the first things that comes to mind, I think I learned a lot of this through my experience with the GLC and I'm an alumni of North Allegheny and just going to that high school and Mrs. Uh, Rufalo was also like one of like my advisors there too. And I think it's just that you are capable of so much more than you think you are. And there are so many opportunities out there that you don't even know exist yet, especially in high school. So just kind of like taking the time to like the GLC and the World Affairs Council really like, helped with this. There were so many careers and areas I had no idea even existed and going to all their talks and events and like really helped me kind of understand more and know more what I want to do. And just like from like a more like self-confidence type of thing, I feel like Mrs. Ruffalo and like other people have really helped me be like, there's, you have so much more in you that you realize and you just need to be able to have confidence in yourself to show other people. So yeah, I can't remember Kathleen who posed the question, but it was funny. 
Wait, that's so funny because like I just thought of the TED Talk question like on the fly, but then like, yeah, no, I don't know. That's so funny. I guess just all of us love a good TED Talk. Um, okay, let's see. Rihanna or Sebastian, do either of you want to go? Sure. <laughs> So I think my TED talk would, would probably be some combination of don't be afraid of detours and nothing is ever definite. Um, you know, coming out of high school, I really thought, you know, I majored in political science and I was really like American politics, Capitol Hill, that's it. That's what I want to do. And I found over time that maybe that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do and that I was still feeling that call from international relations and just kind of from the world at large. And, you know, there were times when I was like, oh, geez, you know, I wish I'd kind of just stayed on the path I was on. But there were a lot of really valuable things that I learned from that. Before. And that's always the best advice I can give anybody is don't be afraid to take a detour on whatever plan you think you have for yourself, because you're always going to learn something and you always end up better for it. So my TED talk would probably be, you know, kind of don't be afraid to take those leaps because it's not wasted time. You still learn something. Yeah, I know you said nothing's definite, but I'm sure that would be a great TED Talk. That's definite. All right, so. Um... I have one really quick. I mean, I was thinking about it. I was like, if I were to do a TED Talk, I would probably do something on like my research or subjects, but I haven't done research lately. So I would probably say if it were a motivational speaker TED Talk, it would be titled like document, document, document. If you have a long-term goal, write down every single thought you've ever had about that long-term goal and like budget, make a Google sheet, go hard, make sure everything's written down because those sort of things you'll be so glad you kept as the project continues. Yep, Google Sheets is a lifesaver. <laughs> okay, so for our final speed round, uh, I wanna be cognizant of time. So if each of you could describe your GLC experience in one word, um, that would be great. I will, I will kickstart it um, by saying empowering. I think it's been a very empowering experience and it puts a lot of trust and responsibility on youth and kind of gives us the wings and encourages us to fly. So let's see, I will call on Madeline. <laughs> um, the first one that came to my mind was enlightening. <laughs> I would say prepared. Yeah, in, in a similar line, eye-opening, because I mean, I hardly knew that this was a field that you could go into before GLC and before all these opportunities. And well, here we are. Um, so, you know, none of this could have been possible without, you know, that initial step. The first word that came to my mind was formative. This experience really kind of shaped, or well, you know, at least now what I'm doing, and it's it's kind of funny to look back at the path that brought me here, but it was that. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Brianna. I would say mine is probably powerful. Um, I still talk about my trip to Morocco all the time, so yeah. Yeah, so I want to wrap up this discussion by saying thank you all so so much uh, for all the wonderful words that you shared and I really had fun talking with you. It was an honor moderating a discussion with such inspiring panelists and I hope to be in your shoes someday. I will now turn it over to Kathleen for youth programming updates and closing remarks. Thank you and take it away, Kathleen. Wow. Hannah, thank you so, so much. Um, you always impress me with your um, ability to moderate a group discussion and you're just so genuine and enthusiastic. And we have appreciated you as a moderator, as a youth fellow, as a certificate student and recipient. Um, lots of thanks to you and to our alumni. We are so grateful uh, for your time here, your insights. Um, I, I really enjoyed listening to this discussion. I loved seeing you all now years later. Um, you all have contributed so much to the council um, through your work, many of you as actual interns at the council at different points. Um, and we're just so grateful for your leadership both now and in the future. So you have been very inspirational and uh, just a huge thank you to you all. 
So I just want to quickly move on um, to a few program updates and I'm going to be joined here by a few of our students. I know that we're just about at time. I'm going to ask if you are available, if you guys could just stay on for about an extra 10 minutes um, to learn about a few of the exciting things that the council has coming up, but I promise we'll keep it really brief. Um, so ex although the GLC program as it has existed is sunsetting with this final cohort of certificate recipients, I just want to let you know that the council's commitment to youth programming for virtual learning and engagement will very much continue. Starting last year, we began working with partners to reimagine a more equitable and accessible virtual global learning space. And we'll be taking the best parts of GLC and creating new content and new ways to engage with global learning. So we hope to launch a new platform next year. So please keep an eye out for many updates to come in the months ahead. And in the meantime, we have a variety of upcoming youth education programs and opportunities that we're excited to quickly preview here for you tonight. And I am gonna also share in the chat a link to a form. And this form will allow you to sign up for more information um, about any of these opportunities that you might be interested in so that as soon as they become available, uh, you'll receive an email uh, prompting you to either register or apply. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Alina to talk about the Youth Board. Hi everyone, my name is Alina Zaidi and I am a junior at North Allegheny. I was lucky enough to have been given the opportunity to serve on the first ever Youth Board of the World Affairs Council as the co-chair of the board for these past couple of months. The Youth Board was created to have youth advise policies and practices to positively impact other youth across Pittsburgh. As one of two chairs, I lead the youth board meetings, meet quarterly with the adult board chair and CEO to be consulted about future plans, and I participate in the adult board meetings. It truly is an experience that we as teenagers can't really get anywhere else. We're always looked to as kids and never really taken seriously, but here on the youth board, we have the power to improve our community by simply speaking up at the youth board meetings. We also have professional development workshops to build skills that will prove useful to us in every aspect of our lives in the future. And the best thing is you don't even have to have been involved with the council in the past to apply to be on the youth board. It's open to every single teenager in Pittsburgh. So applications for the next youth board cohort are opening up soon and I would 100% recommend all of you to apply if you're just tired of not being able to make a change in your community. Please also make sure to spread the word to your friends and other youth that you know. Thank you. I think I'm just going to go ahead because I think I'm up next. Um, my name is Brendan White and I am programming fellow with the council. I'm in the first cohort of youth fellows. Um, and I have three amazing opportunities that I would like to share with all of you this evening. Um, so first is the youth fellowship, which is something that I've had the chance to participate in along with Hannah. Um, and how it works is there's going to be a cohort of, I believe, six new fellows. Uh, and appl applications will open later this month. Um, and as a fellow, you get to work with the full-time council staff for about five hours a week um, on different uh, areas, including programming, which I do, research and innovation, which is Hannah, all the way to the communications team. Um, you get a $200 monthly stipend uh, for your work. I mean, it's amazing, uh, not just job opportunity, but also professional development opportunity to work with the council. Um, the second thing I'd like to highlight is a virtual programming series focused on global news and current events, which is being completely designed for youth by youth. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with a design committee over the past month-ish, um, and we are hoping to launch the program in April. Um, and it's going to be a six-part series uh, that focuses on uh, different uh, global events, um, and it will be about one to two hours a week, uh, and it'll be a cohort of 30 students who are going to move through the series together. So if you're interested um, in learning about some undercovered uh, global events, uh, I would definitely recommend signing up for that. And the last thing I'd like to share is on behalf of Hamza, who is our Global Careers Fellow, um, and he is uh, working to lead the Global Career Seminar, uh, which is also designed for youth by youth. Um, and it uh, takes the World Affairs Council's focus on career readiness um, and takes it to the classroom and um, allows students to explore different uh, organizations and careers uh, around the Pittsburgh area and beyond um, relating to uh, global education uh, and, and beyond that. 
Um, so that's all I have. Uh, and if you're interested in any of those, I would definitely recommend uh, signing up. Um, and just on the youth fellowship, it is an amazing opportunity. Definitely would recommend applying. Um, it's been a, amazing to work with Kathleen uh, and Suwan and the other people at the council. So I definitely re recommend applying for that. Um, I think I'm gonna turn it over to Sojo. Kathleen, we may have have lost connection with Sojo. That's okay. I will be happy to preview just a few last opportunities on her behalf. And I've shared the link there in the chat for you all to take advantage of that form, which includes uh, signing up for the application announcements for both our youth board and our youth fellowship. Thank you um, all for speaking so highly about those experiences. Um, I also want to mention that we are in the process um, of designing a youth um, conference. It is another one of our designed by and designed for youth programs. The conference will take place in May or June um, and we'll have more information forthcoming. We as the council are also partnering with Chatham University to host their upcoming Seeds of Change conference. The Seeds of Change conference will take place on April 15th from 9 to 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. I will share the link uh, for registration in the chat just after I make these announcements here. Um, the Seeds of Change Conference is a chance for K through 12 students to come together across districts and grade levels to share how they're making their schools and communities more sustainable. Um, they will join adult leaders and educators in sustainability to share recent projects, new proposals, and build collaboration uh, coalitions, excuse me, with young leaders in the region. This year's conference is entirely virtual and registration is free of charge. You can also nominate a youth, a young person to be a youth keynote speaker. It's a paid opportunity. And if you're interested in doing that, you can nominate yourself or someone else. I'll also be sharing the link to that opportunity in just a moment. And that form is due by Wednesday, March 17th. Also in partnership with Chatham University, we're gonna be um, participating in two different programs. Uh, one is, uh, a storytelling workshop where you can learn to tell your own story around climate and citizenship justice. That workshop is going to take place on Thursday, April 8th. And on Thursday, April 29th, we will be hosting a story slam uh, live where you can hear everyone's stories. If you also are uh, skeptical of performing live, uh, you can do a pre-recorded story as well, and it will be shared at the live event. So we hope you'll join for those events as well. The council is also happy to be offering two scholarships for students in our region to attend the Luminary Leadership and Diplomacy Camp. This is a seven day camp. It will be taking place in person this year. And it's designed to help teens master the skills of being a, su a successful ambassador. You'll practice your communication skills and learn about different cultures, talk with government and business leaders, meet face to face with diplomats and uh, be able to travel to Washington DC. You'll also sit down to share delicious meals with each other. So if you're interested in a full scholarship to attend that camp, fill out in the form and mark that you're interested um, and we'll be sending you the application to apply for that scholarship. So without further ado, I know we're moving into the end of our evening. I just want to um, congratulate again our final cohort of certificate recipients. Please go ahead and um, use those reactions, use the chat to celebrate yourself, your friends, your students, and your children. We're so happy you've all gathered here tonight. We're so proud of all of your accomplishments. Um, and it has been a meaningful evening for me um, to see you all get to this point. I know you've worked very hard for it and we're really proud of you all. <laughs>